Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for watching over us last night as we slept. Thank you for the grace and the mercy that you have upon our life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being such a loving, forgiving God. Thank you, Father, for all the days of our life. Thank you for your love and your understanding. Heavenly Father, we know without you we are nothing. So, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to watch over us, guide us, and lead us in the righteous way. For we need you, Father, in our life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over the ones who is coming on their way here this, this morning, Heavenly Father, that you will watch over them safe, so they can get here safely, Heavenly Father. Thank you for everything that you have done for us because we are nothing without you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the grace, your mercy that you have upon our life. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We will continue to lift you high, Heavenly Father. We will continue to give you all the honor and all the glory. For Heavenly Father, we thank and praise your holy name. We will continue to do your work, Heavenly Father. We will continue to, to preach to anyone willing to listen to us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, just continue to be with us, and we will continue to do your work. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing all the people here this morning to us safely. Thank you for watching over them. Thank you for guiding us, Heavenly Father. We need you, and we will continue to do everything that we possibly can for you, Heavenly Father. We continue to spread your word, Heavenly Father, to anyone willing to listen. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name. We thank you for this Father's Day, Heavenly Father, that you watch over each and every father that's out here, Heavenly Father, trying to show their children love. Continue to watch over them, Father. Continue to guide each and every one of them, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to give us all the, get, continue to watch over our church, our foundation, all the members that is here, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to bring more members here, Heavenly Father. That you increase our finances and give us a bigger church, Heavenly Father. We ask of you of these things, Heavenly Father. You, you told us anything that we ask for you, we will receive it. So, Heavenly Father, we want to receive this in your name. We thank you, Father. We will continue to honor your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, I welcome everyone of us to today's program. I want to thank God that answer prayer. I want to thank God that see us. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, His grace, we continue to be everyone of us in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, I've decided that we will tag every third week as a power as of old and then god is going to give us the opportunity in jesus name we need what we require to do it and we will continue to do it in jesus name we shall open our aim to name one aim one
Praise the Lord. By the grace of the Lord, instead of start the scripture today, I've decided that as we are having Father's Day, then our Father and the Lord will give us the message on Father. The only thing I don't suppose to say in the pulpit, but I will say is this. <laughs> I forget to tell him that uh, all what we need from him is exhortation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hello. I tried to write a message that uh, this kind of message I'm expressing from you, but the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will be with every one of us in Jesus' name. Once again, let us welcome uh, uh, Brother Benjamin into the pulpit as he's, he's going to give us the message on the Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father Lord, we thank you for giving us the spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of compassion, the spirit to lead and the spirit to think. Father, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom. Father, we've come before you with humility. Father, we thank you for the week that we spent with you. Father, we thank you for the week that we spent working, the week we spent eating and sleeping. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the air that we breathe. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the place that we are here today together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to allow us to gather in your presence. Father, we pray this morning that you talk to us once again. Father, let your spirit take control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I had prepared very well for side the scriptures and then I, I got a text message from the pastor. He said, Father's Day. In my view, every day should be Father's Day. Amen? <clears throat> every day should be Father's Day. And I'll tell you the reason why every day should be Father's Day. You know, when I looked at the dictionary to see the definition who a father is, it says, a male parent of a child. Amen? So be not, listen, be not deceived by what the world is saying today. Without a male parent, a child can never be born. Without a male parent, a child can never be born. Amen? Because they have to, whatever it is, be it in vitro, in vitro fertilization, a male part has to be brought so that a child can be born. You need the man and the woman to make the child. Praise the Lord. So the father is the male parent of the child. So we we'll look at the scriptures. Normally, I do, not I do not define and divide my sermons, but today I will. The, the pastor said exaltation. Well, let the will of the Lord prevail. I'm going to talk a little bit today about also, I'll ask a question to our mothers, and they don't have to answer. You know, when you wake up in the morning, I ask a little bit my wife this question in the morning. You know, when you put makeup on your face, who are you picking it for? Is it for people to see or is it for your husband? If your husband tells you not to put makeup, is he wrong? If you are putting the makeup for him, if he says no, then if you are putting it, putting it out, who are you putting it for? Praise the Lord. Amen? So I want you to see, I'm just beginning the teaching today that the fatherhood, so the, fa the father is not only a father to the children, but a father to the wife. Because, in fact, the Lord, because Sarah herself, Sarah called Abraham who? My Lord. So let me define what a Lord is. When you go to the court, the judge is called who? So on earth, right, the judge is called my Lord when you're in court. What does it mean when you're in court? The judge has the right then to do whatever he or she wants. Your life is in the hands of the judge. So think about how Sarah defined Abraham. 
my Lord. Meaning that he is the Alpha and Omega. And that is why she was blessed. So it is not the purpose of our sermon this morning. But I just want to give the introduction that the father, the father's role is not only to carry the burden of the children. It's also to carry the burden of the wife, who is the mother of the children. Be not deceived. And the reason is that Christ said the husband is the head of the home, just as Christ is the head of the church. Christ carried the burden of the church by dying on the cross. He suffered. He was chastised. He was punished. He was disgraced for the sake of the church. And so will the husband suffer. The husband will suffer for the sake of the wife, be chastised, be disgraced. Amen? And if you go and read, if you read statistics, it says that men are more liable to have heart attack, most especially fathers, and high blood pressure as compared to women. Go and read the statistics. Why? Because the burden, the burden on fatherhood. Why did I rumble and rumble and give this? I want us to understand that being a father, if you say, well, I'm a father only to your children, I will tell you that uh, you have failed in the role that our Father in Heaven has given to you. You are a father not only to your children, but to your wife also. The way you care about your children, you're supposed to care about your wife that way. The way that you are not afraid to bring up things to talk about with your children, the way it should be the same with your wife. The president of this country is the head of the country, right? Every, the box stops with him. Whatever goes wrong stops with him. You know, I, I have not started the sermon, no. This is just, uh, I'm just talk, beating about the bush. I told my wife something. I said, if you go and make decision on your own, the burden is your problem. And it's not my problem because you have stepped aside from what the Lord has designed for us. But if you come to me and we make a decision, if that decision is wrong, the burden is on me. I will take the fall. Whatever comes out of it, if you consult me before you take your actions, and I say yes to it, whether I'm listening or whether I'm not listening, if I just by chance say yes, go and do it, whatever comes out of it, I will take the fall. I'll take the blame. And that is how the Father in heaven, we we'll see how Christ himself referenced his Father. Everything he said, my Father. Everything he said, my Father. Let's read the scriptures. I want us to see now the role of the Father. Even if I don't preach anymore, I think I've done justice, amen? My mothers and sisters in the Lord, please forgive me for the pastor said that he thought I was going to go heavy on, uh, on the fathers, but uh, I, I instead went heavy on the mothers. So yesterday was uh, supposed to be the day that I was born. And, uh, you know, normally I don't care about birthdays. I don't. I, it doesn't matter to me. I have said it here on the pulpit that for me, it's a day that I reflect why I'm, I'm, I'm on earth. What have I done for our Father in heaven? So my wife recognized that uh, I teach here. So she said that uh, my Bible is still a tape, duct tape. It's torn everywhere. She feels ashamed that her husband is coming to the pulpit with a duct tape Bible. May the Lord bless her heart. She gave me a wonderful gift yesterday. As a gift of life she gave to me. She gave me a very beautiful Bible. Thank you. May the Lord continue to bless you and uh, enrich you. And may the Lord give you wisdom as we take this journey together. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be simple. You know, um, eh, some people say that I'm very smart. 
Well, I am not to, but it's just tough to deal with me. Amen? I pray that our Father in heaven will give you the grace. So giving me the Bible, she's giving me a message. What is the message that she has given to me? Praise the Lord. We have not started though, but we have time. Praise the Lord. So she has told me that the work that I'm doing for the Lord, I cannot stop. That's the message she has given to me. Amen. So even though I'm happy that I have a brand new Bible, but uh, she's telling me that, uh, uh, my friend, you have to keep uh, working for the Lord. Praise the Lord. And thank you for your prayers and the encouragement that you've given to me through the fact that you gave me the book of life. Amen. So, and you know, the wonderful thing about this Bible is that uh, it allows me to cheat. By the side, it tells me where the books are. Praise the Lord. So, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, I actually encourage our mothers, you know, when you want to give a gift to your husband, if he doesn't have this type of Bible, save your money up and buy this type of Bible for your husband because uh, it's really, really good. You know, it's a sign of encouragement that we need to continue to serve and follow the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's open our book to the book of Proverbs. I will start with the book of Proverbs and we will end with the book of Proverbs. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs 20. Amen. And it's also the writing is bold, so she understands that I'm getting old. So my sight is not as good as before. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. We'll start with this verse and we'll end with this verse. The just man walketh in his integrity, his children. You know, let's, start, let's, let's take a step backward. Verse 6, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Amen? So, Proverbs chapter 20, we'll, we'll read from verse 6. So, it's saying that most men, right, every man, most men, they will do what? Proclaim everyone his own goodness. So, I'm going to come here to the pulpit and just start talking about myself, how great I am. When I meet everyone, I'm talking how great I am, the good things I'm doing, you know, just talking about myself. That's what the scriptures is saying. But a faithful man who can find, the question is that, who can find a faithful man? A faithful man to who? To the Father in heaven. And let's look at now the character of the faithful man. You know, we have looked at the character of every man, every man who proclaim his own goodness. But a faithful man, this man walked in his integrity. Amen. If he says yes, it means yes. If he says no, he means no. He stands by the truth. He says the truth all the time. His heart is pure. His direction is towards what the Father in heaven has proclaimed for him. Because he's a man of integrity. A faithful man. So also, see, now let's look at what the Father in heaven now has designed as his responsibility. Because if you walk in integrity, let me tell you, be not fool. Children learn from us. They learn. You know, like my son will watch to see what I'm saying, what I'm doing, how I'm doing things. He will be learning unconsciously. I learned a lot from my father, from what he has said, from how he has conducted business. I've walked around with him. I've seen a lot of things he has done. Unconsciously, I learned those things our children will learn. And hear what the Bible says. He said, his children are blessed after him. 
you know, the good thing, you know, like I said, you know, she gave me a, 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 a gift of life. If you go, if you read, it tells you other verses where you can find the scriptures. You can find it in Psalms 37, 25 to 26. You know, Psalm 112, verse 2. Let's look at Psalm 112, verse 2. Psalm 112, verse 2. Amen. We have not started, though, but we have 20 minutes to go. Praise the Lord. We're in good shape. 1, 1, 2, verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His generation of the opera shall be blessed. Amen. That's an, a righteous man, an upright man. His children are blessed after him. It's not says after somebody else, but blessed after him. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. If you are upright, if you are a man of integrity, what will happen to your children? Your children will be blessed after who? They will take after you. What examples are you making for your children today, fathers? Are you making examples that people will see and say, your seeds are mighty upon earth and that your generations are upright? Or are you living your life in such a way that uh, it will be, well, his seeds shall be crooked? I pray that that would not be our portions in Jesus' name. Amen. We start with Proverbs chapter 6, sorry, 20, verse 6 to 7, and we're going to end with that. You know, our Father in heaven said, Forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled, is settled, settled in heaven forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled, is settled in heaven. Let's open the book of John. John chapter 10, verse 30. Let's see how Christ defined who his father is. Even Christ referenced his father all the time. Fatherhood. My brothers and sisters today, I want the men to listen very carefully. Fatherhood is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not just having children. It's not buying a house. It's not going to purchase food. We will look and see what fatherhood is. It's much more than that. John chapter 10 verse 30. <clears throat> John chapter 10 verse 30. Praise the Lord. So, let's read from verse 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. Look at how proud Christ is about his, he references his father all the time. You know, God gave us fathers on earth to allow us to learn how we can reference him. You know, all the time I talk about how my earthly father, a lot of things that I've learned from him. Christ referenced his father. And, and he, Christ went ahead and he said, so he went ahead and said, I and my father are one. Amen. So he's saying that I am the mirror of my father. Can people see your children and say, you and your children are one? Can they say that your children are the mirror image of you? My brothers and sisters, 
if people cannot say your children are an image of you, you have a lot to learn. Praise the Lord. So I would divide this, our topic, into three. Normally I don't do that and I'll talk about it for five minutes. The Father is a source, a source of DNA, a source of inspiration, and a source of knowledge. What do I mean a source of DNA? I said from the beginning that without a man, a child cannot be conceived, be not deceived. Whether I be it conceivement in, in in vitro fertilization, you still need part of the man. Do not be deceived. I've been a scientist for a very long time almost half of my age that I've been a scientist and up to yet it hasn't been proven wrong let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 so the father is the source amen of the DNA of inspiration and of knowledge amen of DNA we can look at that can be found in the book of Genesis I'm not going to read that today from Adam and Eve how in the beginning Adam was made, and then Eve, and then they gave birth to children, and children gave back to children, children gave back to children until now that we are giving birth to. Amen? Just like Adam, the father is the source of part of the child's DNA. Let's look at the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Amen. The Father is the who, the source of information, the source of knowledge. Amen. He's saying that thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children the words of the Lord, which I command thee. It is your responsibility, you wake up in the morning, to lead the house. I begin to teach. Every night I try to read, if I'm at home, I try to read the Bible to my son before he goes to bed. Amen. It is your responsibility as a father, if you're at home, if you're not working at that hour, to make sure that your child reads the Bible. Ah, when you're the head, you direct. Like I said, the president of this country directs. If the, the box stops with him or... Fathers, be not, do not be lazy. It's a responsibility. You're teaching the word of God. You're doing homework with them. You're impacting knowledge. And you're talking. You're continuously having the discussion with them. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Praise the Lord. So we're looking at, you know, Father being the source of the birth of the child and inspiration and knowledge. 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We can also find that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Amen? If you open to the book of Ephesians 6, 4, you also find that. Train up a child in the way he should go. So be careful how you train your child. 
You know, if you are training your child to be a child that is faithful to the Father in heaven, he or she will. If you are training your child to be a straightforward child, he or she will. You know, with my son, I ask him things, I ask him straight to his eyes, and I say, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. I need to understand to see how we can fix this. So he understands that all the time I would demand the truth from him wherever I may. And I've told him he needs to continue to say the truth. You know, at work, when I work, I'm very transparent. And I say the truth. People see that through me. Very, very transparent. And I say that you don't know. You know, you say that the truth will set you free because the Father in heaven has commanded that. You as his children, he will find a way out for you. He has said in the scriptures, when you think there is no way, the Father in heaven will find a way out. Yesterday, as I was watching the news, there were two convicts that escaped from, uh, escaped from prison. And they were approaching this man in his house, himself and his daughter, alone. As they were approaching the house, he cocked his gun and he called 911. And they kept coming. He got into his car and he began to pray. He said, Father, this is out of my hands. I need your help. As he got it into his car and backed off, the escaped prisoners dropped their gun and put their hands behind their hands, behind their backs, to be called. And he said, hallelujah to the Father. When there was no way at that moment, he sought the face of the Father. And do you know what? He gave testimony and he proclaimed. He said, it's not because I have the gun. It's not because I call 911. It's because I cried to the Father in heaven. His little daughter was watching and listening. She will learn to understand that at the moment of time, at the moment when things are difficult, at the moment when things are tough, she will call unto the Father in heaven. And in that moment that they lie down with their hands at their backs and say they wanted to be, to be cuffed, at that time the police arrived and handcuffed them. Not a single shot at him, Amen. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Be not tired, fathers, bringing up your children in the ways of the Lord. Who we'll look at Ephesians, like I said, 6 verse 6, or verse 4. Ephesians... Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 verse 4. And ye fathers, amen. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admission of the Lord. We should not, as fathers, purposely provoke our children. So as we're giving them knowledge, as we're bringing them up, we also teach them provocation we should not. We should not provoke our children just for nothing's sake. Amen? Father as providers. Fathers as providers, they provide knowledge and material things. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. Praise the Lord. Matthew, the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. Amen. We are learning, we are learning from Jesus how fatherhood is. 
you know, that our father is a provider. So Christ said, we start from verse 9. He says, O oh, what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will, give, will he give him a stone? He asked the question, amen. Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Even Christ himself proclaimed fatherhood. Fatherhood as a giver. Amen? We have fatherhood as a provider who provide materially, materially for the children. Amen? As a father, you strive. You strive to provide for your house. You know, like I said, bring up your children so that the same way they go. I grew up understanding that as a father, it is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to provide. There is no escaping from it. Materially and knowledge-wise. Today, you know, children stray from the word of God. And you say, well, I'm a teacher, I'm a pastor. I don't even know how come my children. You know, I have said on the pulpit here, think about your children because in heaven, in heaven, there's no father, there's no mother, there's no children, there's no husband. There are no cousins. So think about your children as those people you meet on the street and preach unto. Because their lives are also very important to God. Amen. Don't neglect them. God has given you responsibility. It's part of the responsibility given to you by our Father in heaven to provide. Even Christ himself proclaimed that if our children ask for bread, we give. For fish, we give. We do not give. Back. Even Jesus himself proclaimed the love of the Father for his children. Are you that Father? If you are not, the Lord is talking to you this morning. We got six, seven minutes to go. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 19. Let's look at the book of James chapter 1, verse 19. James. If somebody reaches there, they can read before me. Uh, yes, sir. Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to work. Praise the Lord. What kind of man are you? Are you the man that reacts and just talks anyhow? You know, I, I, I was talking to some of my colleagues, I said, the way that I think is this. You know, there is nothing that I, I do without a purpose. There is no purpose for whatever I do. A lot of times I don't say it, but every action you see me take, there is a reason behind it. Why? Because our Father in heaven has ordained that that is the kind of person we are supposed to be as fathers. As fathers, we are supposed to be purposeful. Amen? We shouldn't just do things anyhow. Father, as a, father is the person who corrects. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. If somebody reaches there first, they can read. 2 Timothy And verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
Praise the Lord. So even our Father in heaven is saying that he's given us the scriptures for what? For correction, for reproof, to train us. Amen? Even the Father in heaven will never spare us. He's a righteous Father. He expects us to do the same, to teach as we learn, to teach as we learn the scriptures. Praise the Lord. As we learn the scriptures, we teach the same. He says the scriptures is given for inspiration that a man of God may be perfect through furnishing unto good works. Are you teaching your children the word of the Lord? Do you correct them when they go astray? Because our Father in heaven has commanded that. Let's look at Hebrew chapter 12 verse 16. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 16. Amen. We're almost at the end. Our time is well spent. Hebrew chapter 12. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 12, 6, right? No, sorry, my, my mistake. Hebrew 12, 6. Praise the Lord. Even the Father in heaven, it is out of love that he corrects me and you. And we are going astray. It is out of love that you correct your children. You don't allow them to go astray. In fact, uh, I know of a fa pastor who the child went and, and uh, reported because he was trying to make the child right. When he got to court, he told them, well, your government, you want to take him, take him away. Because as long as he remained in my house, if... If he's not doing the right thing, because I don't want him to be on the street. I don't want him to end up in jail. Is it when he ends up in jail that you want me to correct the child? We need to be, as fathers, we need to correct our children when they go astray. Don't because, well, I want to stay away from problems. You know, I don't want to talk too much. So I, I'm not going to talk to my child. Or you're not going to tell your child, well, go up and sit upstairs there. I tell my son he doesn't like it. So I send you to your room. Nothing. You sit quietly in your room. Even though it is painful when I correct him. It has to be done. You know, I tell him every day, I say, do you know that uh, you need to study hard? He says, why? He just wants to watch TV and play video games. And then I say, well, no. If you want to have your own house, if you want to buy your own car, if you want to have your own family, you can do it one day. We have to study hard. Amen. You have to start when they are, see, it is your responsibility, it's not your wife's responsibility. Don't say the mother is not teaching them anything. You're the head, the box stops with you. When the children go bad, you are going to be blamed, my brother. Let me tell you, I'll blame you. I'll be one of the people who will blame you that it's your fault because you're the driver. You know, where the driver, if you don't apply the brake when the brake is supposed to be applied, or when the tire punctures and you don't change the tire, and the car flips over, I'll blame you. I blame myself. Every day is painful. I spend time. I try my best because I know that it is my responsibility. My brothers, it is your responsibility. It is not the responsibility of the mother. But a mother is encouraged to help. 
And that is why our Father in heaven said, the wife helps the man. So that the burden will be light on him. My sisters, I'm not saying that you should not help. A virtuous woman is the woman who goes, you know, we read in the book of Proverbs, a virtuous woman is that woman who goes and looks for food and brings to the house without talking and feeds her family. That's a virtuous woman. You know, permit me if you say, I will say this. It's not the one that you are saying, well, eh, look at him. He, he has nothing. I'm the one buying food. I'm the one doing this in the house. I'm the one paying for these sisters. I'm not saying this, but I'm, I just have to say it, you know. The Lord is watching all of us. We as fathers and as mothers in the house of the Lord. Today is for the next time, if I have to talk about our mothers, it's only going to be exaltation because uh, I have taken them to the dark place today, amen. I've said so many things. But we're almost done. Praise the Lord. It is your responsibility as the father. The box stops with you. When there's a problem in your home, you should be blamed for it. And not your wife. So you can stand up and wake up. Christ said, not my will, but let the will of the father be done. He was here. Christ chased out the thieves in the house of his father. What did Christ say to Peter? Get thou behind me. Thou Satan. Christ was not afraid of his disciples. I encourage us as brothers in the house of the Lord. Take responsibility. You are the driver. You are the pilot. You are piloting. Don't allow the plane to crash. Don't allow your car to run off the road and run into a ditch because you're on the driver. Ah, <clears throat> when a car runs into the ditch, who gets to be blamed? It's the person driving the car. Don't be deceived. If the airplane crashes, who gets to be blamed? The person in the cockpit. My brothers and sisters, as far as you're on the cockpit, take responsibilities. Be wise. Can somebody open to the book of Proverbs 25, 11, and somebody to Colossians 3, 21, and then we'll close. Proverbs 25, 11, Colossians 3, 21. Amen. Praise the Lord. Colossians, Colossians chapter 3.21. Colossians 3.21. Amen. Praise the Lord. And again, we come back to that. So that your children be not discouraged, even as, you know, fathers, as correctors, as you correct your children, do not provoke them to anger so that they'll be discouraged. Don't provoke them so that they'll be discouraged. Talk to them, explain to them. Sometimes my son doesn't want to come to church. And I try to explain to him. I tell him that the food that I have on the table he eats is Jesus that provides it. The house that we're living in is Jesus. His school fees that is being paid is Jesus. The clothes that he's wearing is Jesus. And it's the truth. It's our Father in heaven who provides. So I encourage him that he needs to continue to pray. Even though when he's wrong, I correct him. So we should not prov provoke them to anger. Praise the Lord. Let somebody read Ephesians 5.25. Ephesians Ephesians and 33. Praise the Lord. So like I said, 
the responsibility of the father is not only for the children, but also for the church, like Christ did for his wife. You know, I've said here that, uh, you know, and my wife will tell you, I'm never afraid of bringing up things. I'm never afraid of saying things the way they're supposed to be. I know a lot of things. So why do I try to teach also? So that she will teach the children. Amen? So that she will teach the children. If she's following the law, she understands where the direction of the house is going because the mothers most of the time spend more time with the children than the fathers do. The, you know, the, if I look at the relationship between like myself and my son is different. He doesn't, he, he talks to me, but not as the way that he talks to my wife. It's different. It's more open and more care, not caring what he says, but with me, he's more structured of what he says to me. Understanding, he understands the role of the father. So, then the mother would take the opportunity to teach, to teach the child, because the mother understands where the house is going to. Praise the Lord. You know, the wife is the co-pilot. So, if the pilot is snoring and sleeping, the co-pilot helps and wakes the husband off. Amen. And make sure that uh, that airplane doesn't go into the ditch or go in uh, crashes and so that everybody dies. You know, as the man is driving the car, the wife is the co-driver up front. You know, telling uh, 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 daddy, you're sleeping. He wakes up. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 20 and we end. 20 verse 7. Most men will proclaim everyone has, everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Most men, the man in the world, proclaims their own goodness, how good they are, how great they are, what they have. But a faithful man, are you a faithful man today? Your role as a father is not only to the children. Christ has said, to support the mother, even as Christ supported and gave his life for the church. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Is that going to be your portion? It's your portion going to be, well, everybody's gonna say, well, the child is blessed because the father is blessed. What direction are you steering your family? Let's pray. What direction are you steering your family as fathers? What direction are you steering your family? Are you steering your family towards the Lord or away from the Lord? Are you afraid? Are you afraid of doing the right thing for your house? If you are, ask for strength. Ask for strength from our Father in heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you for the fathers that we have today. You are the ultimate father. You sent Jesus to teach us the relationship between him and you, how we need to live with our fathers. Father, help us as children to respect our fathers. Help us as mothers to support the fathers. Help the fathers as they drive the car, as they are on the cockpit, that father, they will not crash the plane. That father, Lord in heaven, they are virtuous men. So father, continue to bless them and enrich them today tomorrow and forevermore. Father, even when they stray away, bring them back to your kingdom. Father, Lord in heaven, even when they're driving toward the ditch, Lord, stare the staring. Father, support them. The burden is difficult. The road is hard because they are not only carrying children, they're carrying everyone in the family. Father, Lord, we bless you for them today. Father, continue to enrich their pocket as they provide for their family. Father, uphold them. Father, keep them in good health so that they'll have long life. They'll see their children grow. They'll see their children get married. They'll see their great, great children. 
Father, finally, they'll sing hallelujah to you when we all meet in heaven. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us be seated. Um, you will say with me that this message is more balanced than the last year. Because the memory of the last year is still there. I pray that Almighty God is going to continue to help us in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be upon us in Jesus' name. I know all of you respect me, I know, I, I, and I know you allow me to take any time more than Brother Benjamin, any time, as many time I want to take. I have a lot of jokes I have to, I will see today. Most of them fat. <laughs> Most of them joke. It is where in Jesus' name. We cannot live beyond 12. Except that the, when I saw the cooler, <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> You know, I've always been hearing that uh, if there's a man that a woman cannot handle, <laughs> there's no, there's no a man a woman cannot handle. I can see that uh, the presence of Sister Deborah in the life of Brother Benjamin. <laughs> I pray that more of it will continue to happen in Jesus' name. Anytime we see that Deborah Benjamin, we say no. Anytime we see that, like that. so when the cooler came in. Those two things happen to me. You know, I'm very, very emotional. Ibra, Stephen, we remember yesterday. All you women, you will come here, and then the two fastest Bible said that you. God said, I should read for you, I will read for you, and I believe that every one of you will be ready to receive it in Jesus' name. Uh, and I want to, I think uh, you are online. Let us, I said that today is Father's Day. Let us be free. Uh, Brother Benjamin was online uh, on prayer meeting where I decided that I, I God said, okay, I should just pray. And then we did the prayer in the last of the prayer meeting. I think you remember. On Saturday, I was calling Brother Stephen that, Brother Stephen, there's something I want Brother Benjamin to be doing. I'm not saying where well, the meeting, okay, he should be having a special program for us that we will know that he is full sponsor. He is the one that is under it, and everything is on him. So I think I was praying that prayer that how is going to come to manifestation. So when I saw the cooler, I was thinking it was my prayer that was answered. I don't know if behind every successful woman, there is a woman. So I know it is the work of my sister Lisa. So I relieved my emotion to go. Because initially I want to be talking about God so you can answer my prayer. That this one is taking responsibility <laughs> of a leader in the church. But I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the grace of the Lord we owe the union and then by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will go beyond mine in Jesus' name. I told Brother Benjamin on the prayer line, not purposely, I just eat keeping warm in the and the tongues that many eyes are on him, including me, including no matter how, let me pardon me to, to see this language, and then you will pardon me no matter how stubborn he is, <laughs> he knows he's so. <laughs> the, if Charlotte Church does not grow, it is him. If Charlotte Church grow, it is him. Because from whom much is being given, much is being expected. Know that I'm flattering or but there are some things I can do. Everybody will say, oh, see not Matthew, but there are some things he will do, they will say, ah, but Benjamin is there. I know him. We know when we visited the, the prop that visited us, you know all what he said. And uh, I know that, not that I didn't discover, but there are some challenges. And I was praying, I think I discussed it with Brother Stephen yesterday about it. And I know as God has given you the boom, and we are still changing, 
by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, more than expectation of every one of us, you will take it in Jesus' name. And the more the resources you need to do it, Almighty God is going to be providing for you in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus, you will not lack. You will not loop up before you carry on your responsibility in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be sufficient for you. Those people will cause you shall be caused. Those people will pray for you shall be prayed for in Jesus' name. All your captivity by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ shall be returned in Jesus' name. Uh, initially, I wanted to pray for Sister Zilbra alone, but Spirit said that you pray for three of them because a very powerful prayer. And then, uh, as I want to say it, my Spirit said, okay, if it does the first you want to use for them, this is for three of them. So, Mommy, I came with me, please. I want to see you downstairs. I want three of you to come to the front. And by the power and the blood of you, three of you, I want you to come to the front. Both Mommy, I came with me, Sister Priscilla, and then I want you to open your mind, three of you. I want three of you to open your mind to accept this prayer and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ it's going to be yours in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, greatness, almighty God is going to give to you in Jesus' name. Let us, all of us, open to the book of Genesis. Genesis 27. Genesis 27. Uh, I want you to go and after this prayer, hey, thank God. <laughs> after this prayer, I want you to go go and read the fast again and see the meaning of the prayer and the reason why you need to accept it. 27-28. I want you to read it. Because uh, I know God is going to do a wonderful thing in it in Jesus' name. And I will share the testimony before I go. Because I know, I don't know why God said I should do it. But, uh, I went, I, all of you, from my messages, you have seen a lot of things I went through. And we went for a prayer one day. And then after that prayer, through all the night, and I got home. And I saw the man that led that prayer. Just about an hour or two hours I sleep. And he said, I should lay down. And I lay down. And all the prayer we pray on that night VG. And he lays his hand upon me and he run it back. And I, I told when I woke up in the morning, you know, the person that converted me so like me. I went to him and I said, This, 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 this. So see you, you are so lucky. They pray for you during the day, God still pray for you in the night. So don't be wonder if they should go. That can never affect me. <laughs> and uh, I know the grace of the Lord is being, going to be upon you today in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, I want you to read it. Therefore, God gives you of the deal of heaven. And that's how it shall be for three of you in Jesus' name. And the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. I want you to look at that. I will repeat it to let you know how to claim it very well. Therefore, God give you of the deal of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Look at verse 29. Let us, I want you to pay attention to it very well. Let people serve you from today in Jesus' name. A nation bow down to you be Lord over your brethren and let your mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who causes you and blessed be he who blesses you. And that shall be for three of you in Jesus' name. The mighty one of the Lord, the Bible says, go ye in this mighty. I won't say more than that. Go in that mighty in the name of Jesus' name. When you get home, 
Go read it, read it, read it, read this once again. And that will be your portion from today in Jesus' name. Once again, thank you, every one of you. Uh, we went for a service, and then Pastor Dada said, if you are doing this exercise and you are not finishing it, there's something wrong with you. Uh, that's when you have not done the SSS. So it's like uh, after Brother Benjamin's sermon, we should have a seminar on some of the questions that eat me, that I cannot, it's, it's fat, but, but I know the day is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. We went out yesterday and then we went to a, a program I don't know. The pastor called me at last, and then he said a lot of things. Said a lot of things. So I'm looking for the way we are going to call that kind of pastor that day, or we are going to have this kind of things, and God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Uh, for initially, I want to read for Sister Deborah about First Samuel. Let me go on. First Samuel 25:10, so that all of you will learn. All of you will learn. You know, I don't bother about that old Bible. I always see him as a old person. <laughs> Anytime I see him, I always have significance to, to that Bible. That is very, very... But that's the power of women. I'm just using this to encourage you and to thank every one of you for your... I can't I can say a lot of things. God have done through every one of you to us. And then I know by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, this prayer shall be your portion in Jesus' name. In book of 1 Samuel 25. 4 Samuel 25. 4 Samuel 25. 4 Samuel 25, verse 10. And Lamba answered David, servant, and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesus? There be many servants now in this who break away every man from his Master, what happened here is that David was asking for asking for people, and then Naba decided not to do that before to David, and David decided that he is going to kill all his family of Naba. Uh, in verse 22 to 25, I want you to see what Abigail did. No, in fast, okay, let us see what happened. In fast 22, so and more, also do God unto the enemy of David. Of David. If I leave, look at what David said. If I leave off all who pertain to him by the morning light and who urinate against the wall. David was saying that all the family of Nava, they are going to go. And we know whom David is. Now, let's look at the fast 23. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted up the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be and let your hand me, I pray you, speak in your audience and hear the word of your hand me. Let not, my Lord, I pray you, regard the man of Belial. Even Naba, for as his name is, so he is. Naba is his name. Uh, I won't read that part. And then, but I, your enemy, saw not the young man of my Lord, whom you did send. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord live and as your soul live, send the Lord as we tell you from coming to the shed blood and from affecting yourself with your. When you look at that first very well, Abigail bail out the family of Naba. That's the power of women. That's what you can do in our life. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, pride will not go to your head. To the extent that you are, the role you are playing will be insignificant in the name of Jesus Christ. And that role you will continue to Play it forever and ever in Jesus' name. 
if not Abigail, that generation of number they will have gone. And then that's what I was saying. The message of our daddy this morning balance. Last year was really focused on men. But today it was it balanced. It taught you women too. And that's your role. The last time I was telling us that if there's an head, the head may be there. If the pillar is not wrong, strong, the head will come down. And Bible makes it clear that we men, we are the head, but you are the pillar. So if you are not strong, if you cannot bear everything, I always tell my wife, my wife that uh, I'm a manor, I'm a fertilizer, I'm a, uh, I'm a does me. That anything any people do to me, I'm ready, I'm, I, can, I can take it in. You, do you know why? Manor, fertilizer, does me, they grow seeds. They grow seeds. So they are more, even more important because what manor and fertilizer we do is more than what rice we will eat at a time and that it will be finished, we do. So that's you, man. So if your pillar cannot contain everything, insult, every other thing, the air will come down. And that's why you see we men, if we have seen a wife before, and then just take that man, take that woman out of his life, you will see, she will be just, that man will just be shaken. All his life, that's the end. But the only thing which I know, you women in this church, you are learning, and all of you have is humility. The more you are humble, the more your role. Is it not if your husband has money, if he has any other thing more than you, is it not your husband? But you are the pillar. The old I am. And Almighty God is going to help us in Jesus' name. And I make a, a point of every one of you have been doing good. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your pillar will not go down in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate all what you have done for our brother. Almighty God is going to reward you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, there's something very, very important. I really appreciate. Uh, once again, I will still come back to him, Brother Benjamin, for what you did. Because what you did is that you take the cross. That, okay, if you are going to blame the child of the church, blame it. That's what you, you did. And then I didn't see the letter from the headquarters. I didn't see the reply. I didn't see anything. But you have decided that, okay, if there's anything wrong, it is me. Let the blame come upon me. And this is what we are going with. I really appreciate it because uh, nowadays, like, uh, my leaders in the church is meaningless to them. It's meaningless to them. But I thank God in everything. And they are really appreciate it. Uh, but uh, by the grace of the Lord, we still do it in the sense that uh, I'm very sorry. I, it's, some of this, we are family. Don't say I'm saying it on the pulpit. Brown Benjamin have gone so far by contributing some amount without our knowledge. So, but already they have added that money to the money they used to the effort. Huh? You get what I'm saying? Already they have added it. So our own pledge added to the balance that remain. So that make Brabeyamen on behalf of the church become something of the past. Either they, they want to give us glory or no matter what they, it has become something of the past. But he has wrote, he wrote them that, okay, whatever happens, it is me. And they, he copied me, he copied the headquarters. So well, what we are going to do today by the grace of the Lord is this. Uh, we, we are going to pay the money. We are going to pay the money. I don't know how the, how the money will come from. 
um, uh, some of other pledge uh, just fulfill it fulfill it but we are going to pay the money i will sit with benjamin together i will look at what my family will do i will look at what we can take from the from the church and then bra larry pledge that he's going to send other dollars so if Brad Larry send the letter that may remain uh, remain four hundred dollars. My family we I'm very sorry to say we contribute two hundred dollars. So remain three hundred dollars. Let's say we take at least hundred dollars from the church pocket. That's four hundred. So we take that of Brad Larry because Brad Larry couldn't pay yesterday. So we take it from the church post. So that any, I will be monitoring, monitoring it if there's any finances that are going to, so that we quickly transfer from the saving to it. So if Bralare plus my family, that's $300 from the church, Bra Benjamin to make a, a promise entirely. Either the promise is fulfilled or not fulfilled. I mean, not today fulfilled. No, I don't mean that it's not going to fulfill. Uh, the $500, we go to the, we were able to get $500 for the checking account. And then you use, because I will issue the check of $200 for my family. Then we take $100 from Bra Benjamin, uh, for Bra Larry, we take it from the church them uh that's three hundred dollars it means two hundred dollars with the money that coming in with all other commitment we will take five hundred dollars from the church workers and then we rabbin will we pay it online so but all of us were. so let that down one force is part of Challenges and God is going to help us in this. So once again, I want to appreciate Brother Benjamin because it's, it's, it's insult. I mean, put all the blame on me. It's, it's a great thing. I really appreciate. And Almighty God is continue to help you as you are leading the church in Jesus' name. All the resources. That's what I am praying for you. All the resources you need to carry the load. Don't fear. <laughs> Don't fear. God will give to you in Jesus' name. God has sent you on errand. We help you in Jesus' name. And that's why He's not sent the, the bone of the bone. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient in Jesus' name. Um, apart from that, last Saturday, uh, we suggested my wife and then we take into the consideration that maybe that kind of sandboard, but more thicker, I mean, more strong. Down, down one, we should put on the street, on the major street there. The, that will not, I mean, I, the, we not taller than that, but it will be more strong. That we should put it on the major street on 29, so that people will be saying it as a church somewhere. So I think I, Brad Stephen, have been saying we will go and see what is going to. Cost I remember that one cost us thirty thirty dollars. So maybe it's stronger, maybe sixty or something like that. Or maybe thirty five or thirty dollar. So that's the uh, two things I have for us. I want to tell every one of you that the joy of the Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. I wish uh, the reason why I only like the life child faith. As I entered the church yesterday, the man said something. I don't, it's not pride, but the reason why I always appreciate all of you. He said, immediately I interfered. Please allow me to say this again. He said, I saw the grace of the Lord in your life. He has never, we have never discussed, he has never done anything. And then, I think that's the second time we passed, two pass, I mean, it was the sec second pastor that told me that. And the reason why I'm saying this is this. If there's no child of the church, there's no me. You can see the reason why I always appreciate all of you. 
And then Brian Benjamin, we know the, the family who are. Well, we thank God. So if there's no Charlotte Richard, there's no me. So if I'm kneeling down, I'm thanking every one of you, you should know that it is because there's Charlotte Church. I am what I am. And the grace of the Lord will continue to help every one of you in Jesus' name. Your reward will not be in vain in Jesus' name. The powerful message of last such this ritual. Naomi. One. You know, somebody told me that you can never learn enough from the Bible. I never thought of that thing in my life. And then my wife can bear me witness. I'm just telling you so that this one can encourage every one of you. My wife can bear me witness. That's the point I use for the prayer when the man said that you come and pray. And that was the point he used throughout all his preaching. And he will be saying, my brother, when he was praying, say this. And that was the point I used. So you will see that when you are staying where destiny wants you to stay, it will surely carry you to where God wants to carry you to. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not miss it in Jesus' name. After all this thing, I know that you will see a lot of the exhortation. I pray that Almighty God is going to help everyone of us in Jesus' name. And our head will not become tail in Jesus' name. If there's any other thing, I said that we should listen to Bible study, or, I mean, GS by 1 o'clock on TV. Uh, Monday Bible study tomorrow, please. Whoever is around, please let us be. Our fellowship will be here today. It will be in your house. Oh, yeah. Okay. So our fellowship will be here today. I think we are listening to Pastor Dada. Okay. So. Let's do all what we can do to attend all this meeting. Uh, the way people are looking at us outside is more than the way we are looking at ourselves. And we see it when Pastor Moru said, this is not what we are saying. Almighty God is going to continue to help us in Jesus' name. If there is any other thing, I will let us know. Let us bring our title off. Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because you are King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You never change. We thank you, Lord, because of everything you have done and what you still continue to do. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus name. Father, O oh Lord, out of what you have given to us, we bring this token. Let it be acceptable before you in Jesus name. Oh mighty Father, reward everyone for more than our expectation in Jesus name. As we told them. In, in all area that we are the latter rain and our latter rain shall be better than all the previous one this will be our portion in jesus name thank you lord for everything you have done this morning and what you will still continue to do in jesus name we pray let's also put our offering to the bag and as our father is collecting the offering just continue to call upon the name of the lord that god use me mercifully Use me. But that lesson, I don't think I will ever forget in my life. Naomi thought there's nothing he has achieved. We didn't know. He, I, I did not know that he won the soul. You know, I know, but I was not thinking that way, to be sincere. I was not thinking that way. Or what I was thinking that, okay, God loved him and brought him back. But by that lesson let us know he won root. And if not root, Jesus Christ genealogy you wouldn't have completed. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord. The Almighty God will continue to use you. You continue to use me. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. It's time for choruses. Please continue to prepare for confession. I never feel that in God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Praise and worship.
come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I will let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you.
I forget my own token gift. Uh, the computer said go or say why I have not. But the card of three dollars I have <laughs> to show my appreciation and I believe that Almighty God is going to reward you in Jesus' name. I wish you see my heart, how I follow every one of you. And I pray that the grace of the Lord will continue to be here. Small sir. <laughs> For the Bible and then for the Father's name. It is well in Jesus' name. It is well. My Bibles, you see that one? With, uh, you see how I respect you more than Brahma Benjamin? Look at your card. See how big, big it is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is well in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will be with every one of us in Jesus' name. Shall I go to the book of Acts? The book of Acts, chapter 6. The book of Acts, chapter 6. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. May God bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. The grace of the Lord continue to be with us in Jesus' name. Uh, Landa, sister Deborah, have gift for us. So I think it will be the first time you come to the pulpit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you can't avoid it today. <laughs> It is way in Jesus' name. You come to the pulpit. I wish all these children come down. Maybe I think they are having something for them for Father's Day. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, come. <laughs> it's way. What do you want to use in Holy Ghost? The shout of joy will not end in your house in the name of Jesus Christ. And the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, let me reserve the prayer. 
<laughs> it is where in Jesus name. Uh, I've said one, I said five one day, you say yeah, that's why I don't want to say it. <laughs> that's why I don't want to say it. So, praise the Lord. Uh, we shall listen to choir song and the GS message. <laughs> 